Hi everybody, it's Anne Moline here with Women's Wellness Collaborative. And if you have ever heard me talk anywhere on any other video that I've made or on any podcast or anything like that, you have probably heard me talk about gut health regardless of what the subject matter was, right? If we were talking about female hormones, which I frequently talk about, um, or even if we're talking about things related to mood disturbance or um, detoxification, thyroid health, anything like that, there's almost always a gut-related component as well. And that's one of the things that we have um, kind of discovered in working with the many women who we've worked with is that even if they're not reaching out specifically with gut complaints, although many of them are, um, that that's something that's worth looking into regardless if people are dealing with some sort of chronic um, health issue of any kind, um, that usually there is a gut-related component or at least worth investigating whether there are gut-related components. And so the primary tests that I like to run as kind of a baseline to get, a, a, you know, just kind of, um, an overall view is the GI MAP test from Diagnostic Solutions Laboratories, and so I wanted to give you a little introduction to that test today and some of the great things that it can um, provide you in terms of understanding your own gut health. Okay, so the GI MAP test, um, as I said, it's created by a lab called Diagnostic Solutions Lab. It is a single day stool test, um, and it is using what's called quantitative PCR, which in their white paper they describe as one of the most powerful and sensitive gene analysis techniques available. So one of the things that this lab is doing that's different from some of the others is that it's actually sequencing DNA so that they can tell by the DNA sequence that they find what sort of microorganisms are there. So it's not just relying on um, culturing or somebody looking through a microscope to sort of detect what might be there. Um, it's using, this is all based on um, the Luminex molecular technology, which has been designed at Georgia Tech um, and is considered to be the gold standard for GI pathogen and microbial detection by academic research labs. So this is kind of a cutting edge technology and um, I think we'll be seeing a lot more of it going forward. And it is automated, so it does kind of reduce the chance of human error. I would say the only one drawback with it is that um, sometimes if you have people looking through a microscope, they might see things um, just because they're, they're taking a, a kind of a broad view and they're looking for all kinds of different things that may be there or seeing things that might be unexpected. With a PCR sequencing lab, you're only going to see um, what the lab's actually looking for. So it can only detect what it's looking for, um, but it does that really, really well and it looks for a lot of things. So here's a list of all the different things that you can find out about what's going on in your gut. So um, bacterial pathogens, um, parasitic pathogens, viral pathogens. So these would all be things that would be um, particularly egregious in terms of the harm they would have on the digestive system and on the symptoms that you're experiencing. Um, H. pylori. H. pylori would be considered to be a bacterial pathogen that specifically infects the stomach lining, um, and it also has several virulence factors that are associated with it that can um, kind of determine how how negatively it might be impacting your overall digestive health, how at risk you are for um, complications as a result of that. So it gives you a nice kind of view into a lot of that, you know, just how virulent that infection might be should you have it. Um, this test also assesses for normal bacteria flora. So not only do we want to see if we have pathogenic bacteria, but we also want to see if we have sufficient levels of normal and beneficial bacteria. Um, additionally, there are several different bacteria that this lab assesses for that can be considered to be opportunistic, even though they're not necessarily pathogenic. So what that means is that it might be normal to find them in small amounts, um, but that we definitely don't want them to overgrow. And so we'll commonly see many of these overgrowing in people who have what's called dysbiosis, which basically just means an imbalance in the gut bacteria. Um, so this lab looks specifically for dysbiotic bacteria, which are just bacteria that are, you know, overgrowing undesirably. And then also at some specific bacteria that have been implicated as autoimmune triggers, so that can drive some autoimmune processes. And there is uh, some research available on the ways that certain bacteria influence things like um, thyroid, 
autoimmune conditions, um, rheumatoid arthritis, right? So there, there are several things out there. So this is really interesting to look at. Um, we also get a sense of yeast and fungi. So things like candida, microsporidium, um, these are things we commonly find and that people are generally aware of in some ways, but this can give us a sense of um, how, you know, how much of a factor they are for you. And somewhat new to this lab and perhaps somewhat disturbing to some people, um, this is also now assessing for a variety of worms. So these would be kind of parasitic, undesirable worms that would be um, resident to the digestive tract. In addition to all of those you know, kind of microorganisms that you would be looking for with this test, it also has several um, indicators of overall intestinal health, which I think is a great thing that this test provides that a lot of others don't. Um, a lot of others do, but a lot of others don't. And so these can give us a, a lot of additional information. So elastase 1 um, is an indicator of pancreatic enzyme production. So it lets us know if you're producing sufficient amounts of enzymes to help break down and assimilate the foods that you're actually eating. Um, Steatocrit is in, gives us insight into how well you're breaking down and absorbing fats specifically. Um, Beta-glucuronidase is an enzyme that um, can impair the detoxification of um, hormones, specifically estrogens, um, and beta-glucuronidase can get produced by dysbiotic gut bacteria. So this can let us know if your gut health is impacting your hormone health, right? So we kind of come back to that connection. Um, fecal occult blood, always good to know if there is blood in your stool. Um, secretory IgA, which overall gives us insight into um, how well the immune system of the gut is functioning. And anti-gliadin IgA, which can give us you know, some insight into whether, how, if, whether and how strongly you're reacting to gluten. It's not really an indicator of gluten sensitivity, but it does let us know if you're having a specific kind of immune response to gluten. Um, and calprotectin is a measurement of inflammation in the small intestine. So that's also a really important thing to know. Sometimes we'll see people who don't really have any pathogens, but they have really high levels of inflammation along with dysbiotic gut bacteria and some other um, irregularities in the intestinal health markers. And sometimes that can give me um, information that might suggest that we want to look elsewhere into things like maybe SIBO or that you even might need to be referred out to a gastroenterologist. So um, that's a lot of what the GI map can show you in brief summary. Um, if you decide to run the lab on yourself, obviously we would go um, into much deeper depth as to your results and how they can inform the work that we do together in your personalized protocols through our program.